So in our previous video, we took a quick look at the ETC password file. Now let's take a little bit closer of a look at it. So the command we used was cat, let me get onto the right screen here, cat forward slash etc forward slash passwd. We'll talk about cat more later on. For the moment, just know that it is one way that we can choose to look at a file and it'll just display the contents of the file for us. Now, in this case, all of our users fits on one screen. Now, most of these users are actually users who were automatically created. We didn't do it. They're used by, or they were created automatically by the system. The David is my account, and then we have uh, M Maxwell, which is the other account that we've created. We had another one, but we deleted it in a previous video. Okay, now, one thing that I want to show you with this cat command. If we have more users and fit on one screen, we can do the pipe it to more to see one uh, page at a time. Or if we're looking for a specific user, we can use another command called grep. So this is what it is. It's cat forward slash etc forward slash password. P-A-S-S-W-D forward slash grep. Now grep is a command that we're, or not forward slash grep, we're piping it to grep. Grep is a command that will look through all of the text that we send it and it will look for a specific text pattern and then it will show us that line. So let's say I'm looking for the user M Maxwell. It will display us just M Maxwell and you'll notice that it highlights what it found on or in red. So if I'm trying to find a specific user, I can put in that specific username and it will display just that information for me. So not really related to the file. That'll actually work anytime you uh, display a block of text. Grep is a very handy tool for that. Now let's take a look at this file itself. So this file has a series of fields separated by colons. So you'll see the first colon or the first one here is the username M Maxwell. Then we've got colon X. Now that used to be the field where we would store the password. We don't store the password anywhere. Uh, or we don't store the password here anymore. There we go. Get that sentence right. We store it in another file. And the reason we do that, there's a couple of reasons. We want to store an encrypted password and we want to store it in a place that people can't get to. So the password is actually stored in the, well, a hash of the password. We'll talk about that more in a few minutes. It's stored in the etc shadow file. Now you'll notice I accessed this without using the uh, sudo command. So I don't have to use administrative privileges to look at the etc password file, which by the way, that's where it got its name is originally it held the username and the password. Now it holds the username, no longer the password. So um, the shadow file, you have to be a root user in order to be able to look at. We'll look at that in here, here in a few minutes. Now your next column over, you'll see 1002. That's the user ID. So we keep track of username or users by username. The system keeps track of users by user ID. So that's what that UID is. And the next time I create an, a, another user, it'll just increment to the next available user ID. Now, following that, the next 1002, that's their primary group ID. We're going to talk about groups more in another video a little bit later on. But if you do not specify a primary group for a user when they cre you create them, the operating system will create a group with the exact same username or with the exact same name as the username and make that their primary group. So the next colon separates out the next field and you'll see there we've got Michael Maxwell, oh, comma, comma, comma. All right, this is a comma separated section of basically alternative information. Let me grab my account. And you'll notice that I don't have that. I have David and that's it. So when you when we did this one, the M Maxwell, we used the add user, which added which prompted us for additional information like the user's full name, their phone number, their office. All right, all of those things are stored in that block, separated by commas. Now the next colon, you'll see colon forward slash home forward slash Maxwell. M Maxwell, that identifies the user's home directory. And then the last one identifies the user's default shell. 
So you'll notice we're using the bash shell as the user's default, and it's located in forward slash bin forward slash bash. And you see we're using that for both of our accounts at the moment both the uh, Maxwell and Maxwell and the David account. And most of the time that's going to be the appropriate uh, shell. If you do need to change to an alternate shell, you can. Now, I said that the password isn't actually isn't stored here. It's stored in the ETC shadow file. And one of the reasons is to secure that file. So if I cat forward slash ETC forward slash shadow, if I can spell shadow, you'll see that my access is denied. A standard user doesn't have access to that file. So I can sudo cat etc shadow, and I can look at the uh, user information in the shadow file from there. Now again, there was a whole bunch of information here. So just like before, I can cat that and pipe it to more, or I can pipe it to grep, and I'm just gonna look at m maxwell. Okay, here you're going to see again highlighted because you know that's what we were searching for with grep. You're going to see the username. Now that next big long string that is the password hash. Now a hash is a one-way uh, transformation of the password. So you put in a password, it hashes what you put in the password, it stores the hash rather than the actual password. And the reason we do that is it makes it it makes it impossible to reverse engineer it. Now there is a way that you can using hash tables. There are ways, very difficult, very time consuming, but there are ways that you can determine a password that will generate this hash. So because of that, we go ahead and bury this in a file that nobody can get to unless they have root permissions. Now you'll notice after the password hash, we do have a couple of other things. Colon eight, uh, 18995. Now, this is a fun little thing. This is the number of days since the beginning of the Linux Epoch, which is technically January 1st, 1970. The number of days that have passed since that point till the user's uh, password was actually changed. That's a little funky. It's a way that uh, Linux can keep track of when that password was last changed. There is another way to look at that. So I can do sudo... Um, yeah, P-A-S-S-W-D, so password, dash capital S. Show me the statistics for M. Maxwell. Maxwell. And here you'll see the name. You'll see that capital P. That indicates that the uh, password is set and usable. A capital L there would indicate that the, it is locked. An NP would indicate that there is no password. Now, what this does, you'll see the January 3rd, 2000, or yeah, 2022. What this does is it takes that 18995 and actually translates it into a date. So you can actually see what date the user actually changed their password. Now, the rest of the numbers here, 0, 99997, nine, 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 right, these are all password settings. So first one is how many more days can transpire, can transpire before the user is allowed to change their password. That zero means they could change their password today if they wanted to. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in our video on password policies um, a little later on. The 9999, 9,000, I think I missed one nine, 99,999, that's how many days uh, until the user's password expires, which basically is infinite. This password is never going to expire. And then the seven is how many days do they get warning before their password expires, which is kind of irrelevant. And then a couple of options that actually aren't set. Okay, so... Big thing I want you to see out of this, the ETC password file is where we store user accounts. The ETC uh, shadow file is where we store the user's password information, so the hash, and then their password aging information. Now, technically, it is possible to edit these files directly. Don't. There are much better options to manage them, and we're going to talk about those as we move along here a little bit. But I wanted you to see these files because this is a quick way that we can use to go try to find user information.